where, okay, let's talk mismanagement. Owner to employee, employee to other employees, what do you see? Generally, uh, middle management, you like, usually there's someone in charge of running a production floor. Um, one, they probably don't get the support that they need from the owner. Support being training as a manager themselves. Like, I, I was lucky enough to go take HR training, work with Chris Besh at Culture Works, and have you know a management training um, paid for by the company I was working for, which was which was great. Um, and like with the mismanagement, there's there's a certain thing to be said about people blowing a gasket on a production floor. You have to control your emotions. It's incredibly important to make sure that you, as the leader, set the tone. Okay, so let's let's break down mismanagement. Oh, oh my gosh, I got Put that I got in place. Like, oh yeah, there we go. I, I gave go. him the Alice Cooper eyes. I gave him the Mike Tyson. Um, so mismanagement from the owner. So sh- should I'm going to make a statement? Should an owner be running the production floor on a day to day basis? No. If you have two autos. No. If, you're, if owners are driving the car, why are they in the back seat? Okay. Should an owner be running the production floor if they have one auto? How many employees? Six? I don't know. Six, seven? Yeah, that's probably the, the tipping point. Okay. So once you break out of one auto or you get, what, 10 employees? Yeah, because then you, you – you stop really managing the production because there's too much to focus on. You start managing, you know, a larger staff and then other departments. Um, I I don't like when owners interject with the production side of things because there are professionals out there that know how to run a production floor. And I was I was always graced with the ability to have owners that go run this for me, like. Mitch at AOV, Will at Denver Print House, they literally hired me in and said, run this place, <laughs> which okay, was great because so, then I was, I was free to do it. So owners being too involved in production, I think cripples cripples the business sometimes. Yeah. You ever put your finger in a fan? It stops the fan and it hurts your finger. <laughs> Stop doing it. But Ryan – a real production manager co- might cost 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100,000 yeah. dollars. We can't afford that. Now what? If you're bringing in someone of that pay grade and that salary, the efficiency of your floor should justify that payroll. For sure, or that payroll, that salary. And should they be a print expert? Not necessarily. I mean, Especially now with like with the autos, you want to have some basic skills for sure. You know, like you don't have to dial in your EOM and understand the whole nuance of exposures. And I don't think you need to be super deep, um, but you have to be really good at time management. That's super crucial. Um, you have to understand that there. I like to think that it's a, it's a 50-50 game. There's half of its people, half of its print. So as much as you focus on how do I run this job and how, what's the, the print sequence and what's the best ink for this, you also have to focus on like how is this person doing? Are they paid enough? Have I challenged them enough? Do they know enough? Do they have access to the resources that they need to become a better employee? Am I training them properly? Am I good at management? You know, like it's, it's split. And I think everyone focuses on the print side of it. And then they freak out when the staff's a disaster. It's got to be equal. It's got to be half and half. Interesting. So if you were interviewing a production manager, what are the top three skills you're looking for? I want, well, I want to see their personality and mannerisms. So that's, that's one, you know, I want to analyze them as a human. I want to see their communication skills back and forth and then what their skill set is and what the previous experiences are. One, have you managed a shop before? Are we going to be the guinea pigs? <laughs> you know, I, I did a couple exercises with some operators where I took them off the press and I had them kind of run the floor. For, I took my my lead production artist at Denver Print House and had him run the floor for a couple days. And when I left, he took over. Like, I, I always train replacements for a reason. 
it's not for an, an it's not an exit strategy, but I, I always like to train up every chance that I get. And he was able to pull it off. 